My name is Sean Daly. I'm a rapper. Uh, I got interested in writing, I'm pretty sure it was in junior high, and it was a song. Um, prior to that, I wasn't very interested in writing or reading. I was more into drawing and illustrating. But uh, there was a song that came out, and one of my homies actually, we were in ISS, and uh, he was writing lyrics to the song, but making his own lyrics. And he told me to write some too. And so we'd come up with like a little thing where we'd go back and forth with it. And it was, uh, so my first, my first inspiration to write a song was, was me and my homie. We were rewriting a song, a popular song that was out. And, and like I said, changing the words to meet our requirements. And uh, the song was called Up Your Butt by Eddie Murphy. I think it was called Up Your Butt. It might have been In Your Butt. I think it was Up Your Butt. And Eddie Murphy's song was something like, you know, put a garbage can up your butt. Put a frying pan up your butt. So it was kind of rap, even though the music was kind of more of like a funk thing or, or like a contemporary R&B thing. But he was kind of rapping, but he was doing his satire. This was back when comedians still used to make songs, you know. So he was doing it as a satire, maybe of hip-hop culture for all I know. So really, I guess what I'm saying is it's very possible that Eddie Murphy, while insulting hip-hop culture, inspired me to take part in it, which could surmise my whole career, truthfully. As I got older and more involved in hip-hop culture, because in junior high I was mostly interested in breakdancing and graffiti, but as I got older and more involved, I started, you know, messing around and writing more songs. And I'm pretty sure I kind of did the same thing where, you know, my first few songs, I was probably just changing the words to a Run DMC song or a Slick Rick song. Lottie Dottie. I remember I had my own version of Lottie Dottie at one time. And I don't really know where that falls in the timeline, you know. But by that point, I kind of considered myself to be a little rhyme writer. Um, but not seriously. I, you know... I, I had my eye on the turntables. I wanted to be a DJ instead. And the rhyming was just kind of because some of my friends rhymed and you would just hang out with your friends and you would all spit raps, you know? Um, but I think over a course of time, certain MCs emerged that inspired me, you know, as I started paying more and more attention to what the rappers were actually saying that inspired me to, to, to try writing more raps and to try and take myself more serious as a rapper. You know, Karis One's album, Criminal Minded, when that record came out, and Rakim, Paid in Full, those two records especially, were on kind of a new level because these guys weren't just rhyming line for line anymore. These guys were writing whole paragraphs that had the rhymes built into the paragraphs, you know. Karis One had a style where he would come in on the, on the three with the rhyming word. You know, he was, these guys were doing things that was, you know, it was making it more conversational. And I was good at conversation when I was a kid. I was a good arguer. Arguer, I don't even know if that's a word, sorry. I was, a, I was, I was good at dialogue. So when Karis won and Rakim and Big Daddy Kane happened, I think that's probably what pushed me finally into taking my own rhyming a lot more serious. Yeah, the first, the first probably, I don't know, man, eight years of me rapping was all braggadocio stuff. But that's all I really knew to do, you know. And you would sometimes throw a small, not quite a story, but maybe a scene inside of the braggadocio. And so there was aspects of storytelling inside of the braggadocio and, you know, descriptive and, and whatever. But I think... Uh, for my own writing, it was probably, there was a song that I wrote, I think I wrote it in 1994, I'm going to take a wild guess, 1995, and it was shortly after my first son, Jacob, was born, I wrote a song called God's Bathroom Floor, and that was the first time I ever wrote a song that was outside of my normal bragging and boasting and, and I'm cooler than you and I can rhyme better than you kind of a song. That was the first time I ever really wrote 
anything conceptual like that because it wasn't just a story but it was also like you know I was leaving things open for a lot of interpretation I was trying out a lot of stuff that I'd only heard about maybe when I was half asleep in an English class somewhere you know but I was trying my hand at it through rap like I was much more of a rapper than a writer much more of a rapper than anybody who even understood the language you know my version of communication wasn't about knowing a lot of words and how to use them but it was more about knowing how to use a voice and how to use persuasion you know and so yeah I wrote God's bathroom floor and people responded to it pretty pretty well for me being this local rapper that nobody ever heard of I'd perform it at a show the first time I performed it and the whole crowd responded and this was not even an atmosphere show this was like a showcase full of rappers and whatever and people responded to that song in a way that I had never had before and that I really had never seen anybody do in rap you know not like at the time I didn't think of this but now like looking back on it I hadn't really seen a uh, a woman respond to rap the way I saw women respond that night and I don't mean in the like I admire the rapper thing but I mean coming up to me and talking to me and, and asking me about that song in particular you know it's like uh, and, and, and same with the dudes like dudes were like what was that all about you know and, and so I think that validation kind of you know it, it excited me it made me want to go forward and write more stuff like that you know and, and to try to learn how to tell stories and not just brag about how big my feet are, you know. God's Bathroom Floor is, is pre-Overcast by a few years, actually. Um, the first time we performed God's Bathroom Floor was 95, and the Overcast didn't even come out until 97. You know, God's Bathroom Floor was a song that I had sitting on the back burner for live shows. I think we might have put it on a cassette or something. For some reason, I feel like it might be on compensation. I could be wrong, but I feel like it might be on that tape. Or one of the tapes, one of those headshots tapes, a live version might be out there. I guess I don't remember. But, uh, you know, obviously it wasn't my first song, but, but it's, it's, it's the only song from back then that still exists and follows us, you know. If I were to try and put measurements on them as far as like, you know, trying to measure the difficulty of the different types of songs I write, I don't know that I would put the personal stories about myself as any more or any less difficult than the observational stories and I think you know there's kind of a people people think that all of these songs that are about me are deeper than just observations when generally they're just observations as well you know it's like I've never really put a hundred percent of a there's very few I, I won't say never but there's only a handful of songs where this is a hundred percent this happened and this is how it happened just because I've always tried to stay away from putting other people's business out there like that. You know, if I write a song about a situation me and you had, that ain't really fair to you that I put your business in the streets like that. So, the streets. So, um, I try to keep my personal stuff also from an observational angle. It's just that it's myself observing myself. I would put them kind of neck and neck with when I just totally make up some fiction. They're, they're kind of, they're about the same as far as like, to me, as far as like the procedure of writing them. They're kind of the same. I flush out the story. I get an ending before I even get a beginning because I want to know where it's going to end up before I even start. And then that way I know what the pace is that I have to go at to reach the ending. You know, the hardest song for me to write nowadays is the bragging and boasting song. You know, it's like I have no, or I should say very little desire to prove how cool I am to anybody. You know, it's like, and, and to much less waste three and a half minutes of a good beat in order to do that. I could sit down at the radio station any Saturday night and freestyle and do that and get that out of my system. You know what I mean? It's like I don't need to, I don't, I don't need to, uh, I don't need to put that in my songs, you know. And not only that, but I mean, let's get real. I'm, by the time you guys have this edited, I'll be 38 years old. And what 38-year-old is so insecure that he has to act like he's cooler than a 25-year-old? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, whoa, what are you really telling me about yourself? You know what I mean? Like, you insecure pussy. I have rituals. I, uh, when I write, I generally have a cigarette going in the ashtray, burning like it's an incense, a nasty, funky, smelly incense. And I usually keep some coffee there. I keep a lot of water around. Um, I sit in the same spot. I write in the same place. Not my whole life, obviously. 
but when I start to write a record or something, I try to write everything sitting in the same environment. Um, I guess, so I guess all that could be considered a ritual. I, I don't drink when I write at all. Sometimes I'll have a beer when I feel like I finished something awesome, you know, it's kind of like a celebratory beer. But uh, that's about the extent of the ritual. Oh, I mean, aside from the, the kitten sacrificing. But we don't really need to go into all that. Edit. I have really no way to, to, to deal with writer's block. I have no way to combat it. You know, I, I, uh, I, just, I just work through it. You know, sometimes I'll sit there staring at the same eight bars of music for eight hours trying to figure out what the hell is this song supposed to be about like I know the music is telling me something but what what is the music saying what what kind of song is the music asking me to write and I consider that to be my writer's block but truthfully I haven't had a writer's block last more than a week in probably probably half a decade you know it's like Usually when I want to write, I can sit down, zone out, and, and write, you know? There's a huge difference between writing a verse and writing a hook, you know? I mean, the chorus essentially is part of the music. That's how I see your chorus. Your chorus is, when, when, when you're doing your hook, your voice is an instrument for the music right there, and you're supposed to help the music communicate what it's communicating and then have some words in that chorus that make sense and that back up the idea of what you're trying to present as well you know I feel like choruses are definitely more difficult to write than verses not I don't know you know I enjoy writing choruses I usually write the chorus first when I find a beat that I like I usually work on the chorus first but uh, I, I put a lot of pressure on them I feel like the chorus is 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 probably twice as important as the actual verses you know because once you get the chorus and and the beat together now you have the idea of what the song is about and now the verses are just to kind of detail that idea or or reinforce that idea you know but and that's why sometimes i make you know I'm, i make a lot of songs that don't have choruses because sometimes i don't know what this beat's telling me to do so you know what i'm just going to rap for 60 bars and call it a song, you know, say something dumb at the end and then it's got a title, you know. <laughs>